All right, Wilbon, which absence is more concerning for the 49ers, Trent Williams or Brandon Ayuk? Tony, you know this isn't even close to me. It's not close to close. It's Trent Williams. I mean, you put, a, you put that Hall of Fame bound left tackle out there on that offensive line, and you can do about whatever you want. People talk about the 49er offense maybe being the best in football. It's that in part, in large part, because of Trent Williams. And don't tell me that Kyle Shanahan, uh, that uh, Debo Samuel, uh, Kittle, and McCaffrey together can't make up for IU. I know he's a great player. He's a terrific player. But don't tell me that with that coach and that scheme and those three skilled players out there on the field, they can't figure out how to get, I don't know, five or six or seven more catches, more pass receptions per game, because they can. The answer is Trent Williams. Yeah, this is the elementary fact of football, that the offensive line is the spine of your team. It's as simple as that. The Washington teams that you and I wrote about for 20 and 30 years were led by the Hogs. The Hogs were the offensive line. They protected three different Super Bowl-winning quarterbacks, none of whom went to the Hall of Fame. That's how important it is to protect a quarterback. If you can protect him, no matter what his skill level is, he's going to have a chance, but you got to protect him. And that's why you're 100% right. It's, it's trend. Everybody would tell you this. Every coach in the history of the world, I would think, would tell you that having the best left tackle in football is more important than having a wonderful receiver if you've got yes. other offensive stuff. Yes. And, Tony... You know with the way the 49ers scout, you know with the with, with the with the I, I'm I'm gonna use the word brilliance of the, the offensive coaching staff and starting with Shanahan, they're gonna f- introduce somebody who may make up 70% of the absence of Ayuk anyway. And again, I'd like to have Brandon Ayuk if I'm, I don't know, 25 teams sure. in the league, but don't tell me that he's more valuable than Trent Williams. That would be fantasy football foolishness. And that's it. We're done. It's a good you. line. Fantasy football foolishness. I like that line. It's good. Joins LeBron James and Kevin Durant as the only NBA players to surpass $500 million in career earnings. Jets receiver Mike Williams has been cleared to play in New York's season opener against the Niners on Monday Night Football on ESPN. Williams says he feels good as he works his way back from a torn ACL. The Browns have reworked quarterback Deshaun Watson's contract, converting over $44 million into a signing bonus this season. Sources telling Field Yates the Browns now have more than $62 million in cap space, the most in the league. And U.S. Open, you were watching earlier today, men's top seed Yannick Sinner. He's through to the third round after breezing in straight sets. Women's top seed Iga Sviatek also cruised today in straight sets. Still to come on Sports Center. April 1st. Here's Douglas today. Nothing's changed from our end. Um, obviously, a ton of respect uh, for Hassan and um, awaiting his arrival. And, uh, um, you know, looking forward to when he does. He's going to be welcomed with open arms. We, we did talk uh, about an extension once that uh, once one wasn't agreed upon you know we had the conversation and we felt good about about making the trade um, and so you know obviously uh, came here reported um, had a great day here and um, again we just uh, we're just waiting his arrival waiting his arrival Boy, it's going to be a while. NFL analyst Mina Kimes joins us now. You know, Mina, a season ago, this Jets defense was Super Bowl-level good. What kind of concerns do you have for this unit without Hassan Reddick? I still think they'll be good. There's superstars at every level, starting, of course, with Quinn Williams up front. But Super Bowl-level good, that really depends on Hassan Reddick's presence for a couple of reasons. This Jets defense does not blitz. They blitz at one of the lowest rates in the NFL. They're so dependent on that four-man rush. And you need a star edge rusher for that to really click. Uh, it's pretty young group behind him. It also matters a great deal week one because they're playing a San Francisco 49ers offense that, in addition to being the best in the NFL last year, was basically unblitzable. The only way to beat them was to get home with that four-man rush. Their ability to do so without Hassan Reddick, I have some questions about. And by the way, the guy that was actually blossoming into a star on the edge, Bryce Huff, 
is now with the Eagles. He's no longer with the Jets. So that's the quandary they're dealing with. Keep that in mind as they go into the season. Mina, thank you so much. Still some business to deal with. We're following a developing story with the Niners regarding their star left tackle Trent Williams, who's still holding out, wanting a new deal, as well as receiver Brandon Ayuk's hold in. Ayuk didn't practice today or yesterday, practicing after being cleared medically by team doctors. Here's Adam Schefter on Ayuk earlier today on the Pat McAfee Show. There's never, never been a case as unpredictable as the one that has gone or wasn't. A trade with New England was coming together until it wasn't. A trade with Pittsburgh was going to happen until it didn't. He was re-signing with the 49ers after meeting with them until he didn't. He was going to be traded again until he wasn't. Now, he was going to practice yesterday until he didn't, until he goes to them. All right, so the Niners have absolutely had to back up the Brinks truck numerous times. You look at the sizable 2024 cap hit and Ayuk's contract situation. They've spent the most in cap value at the wide receiver position in 2024. The only team to exceed $50 million. You got the Seahawks and Dolphins, meanwhile, the only other teams to exceed 40 million. Hey, let's get Mike and Tony to weigh in from the PTI desk. 